That was the other thing. I, I was doing three camera comedy. I was doing this three camera comedy, and then I got a call from Charles Joffe, who produced Woody Allen's movies, and he said, uh, "We're going to do a comedy, and uh, it's been created by this genius. Would you like to meet him?" And I thought, "Well, I'd like to meet a genius." So I went over and met uh, this guy, Steve Gordon, who genuinely was a genius. And he had created this half-hour show called Good Time Harry. And I'm convinced he heard about me through Jim Brooks because they were very close friends. And the staff on that show was basically was Steve Gordon, myself, and Mickey Rose, who was Woody Allen's main collaborator. And it was a, it, hard to explain, it was sort of a noirish three-camera comedy. Uh, we did six episodes and it didn't go anywhere, but it was a, an amazing experience for me because the people were so, you know, Jim Burroughs directed the pilot. Um, it, it was a great cast. It, it was just a great experience. But, but I became convinced very quickly that I, I was not as thrilled with three-camera comedy. I wanted to be a filmmaker, and filmmaking to me was, you know, a much more elegant medium, much more studied, much more contemplative. Uh, you know, three-camera comedy is some sort of bastard medium, some sort of this thing that's really a stage play that's photographed by cameras, and it just it wasn't where my, where my soul lived. Um, and I got an offer, I got two offers at the same time, this young guy and his partner, this guy named Steve Bochco, and his partner, Michael Kozel, called me and said, why don't you come in and look at this pilot that we've just done? And they showed me this pilot called Hill Street Station. That's what it was called. And it was so dark. And um, lights came on. What do you think? We'd like you to do this with us. And I said, this is never going to fly. Uh, first of all, you killed the wrong guy at the end. Because in the pilot, they killed Charlie Haid. I said, and it's so dark. And it's so unrelenting. This is never going to fly. And uh, I thanked them for the opportunity. And I, I left. And then I, I got a call from... Um, so I turned down those guys. I turned, long story short, I turned down all the really good shows and suddenly realized I didn't have a job. Well, actually, I turned that down and then I got an offer from um, Sam Cohn called me. He used to be a very powerful agent out of New York and he represented Steve Tessich. Steve Tessich just won the Academy Award for Breaking Away. And he had read something I'd written and really wanted me to be involved in the television adaptation of Breaking Away. And Frank Koningsberg, who was another gentleman I'd met who was sort of a fan, said, you should get involved with this. Long story short, I ended up doing this adaptation of Breaking Away for Television, which only lasted six or seven episodes. It starred uh, Sean Cassidy and Jackie Earl Haley came back from the film, and a guy who went on to be a good friend of mine, Tom Bray, and a guy named Tom Wigan, and um, Barbara Barry, who had done the film. And um, inexplicably, the na network had cast Vincent Gardenia uh, to play a man baffled by the fact that his son wants to be an Italian. It made no sense, but that was the show we had. And, and to me, that was filmmaking, because we were going to make it in Athens, Georgia, on a location. And I thought, I'm going to make this show like the shows that I admire. And, and I, I hired all these people to direct who had never directed television before, because I wanted I mean, it was a crazy thing for me. And I did these six or seven episodes, and it was extremely well-reviewed, but not terribly well, not watched by a lot of people. Well, I started as the executive story. I had some title that started, but frankly, everybody around me started dying, started getting heart attacks. And by the time the smoke cleared, because I was this young kid, I, they came to me, Fox came to me and said, you're going to produce this show. And I said, I don't know anything about producing. They said, we'll teach you. I, I, I remember it clear as day, and the gentleman who was uh, running the studio at that time, Don Kloon, came in and he had a production board. And he said, this is a production board. This is a strip. And they and literally taught me how to produce in about in about a day. And I had an amazing physical line producer in Georgia, a guy named Sam Manners. In fact, he used to use this term. I would call him up and say, I want to hire this one to direct. And he'd say to me, oh, that guy's no picture maker. And that's where I got the name of my company. I loved that expression, picture maker. It just suggested all sorts of things to me that I, I loved about, about making movies. And that was my first experience producing. It lasted six or seven shows, and then it folded, and then Steve Bochco called me again. And they had gotten to the end of the first season of Hill Street Blues, and he said, come on, do this thing with us. And I said, nah, you're never going to get renewed. Nobody's watching, because nobody was watching Hill Street the first year. What a golden gut. And uh, I found myself without a job. I think it was thrilling, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, 
I remember the first time walking onto a studio lot, and it was the Paramount lot, and I remember walking onto a stage at Paramount and thinking, oh my God, I think I'm gonna get sick. Just being so overwhelmed, so overcome with emotion. But after that, it sounds immodest, but I think writing, television, film, particularly dialogue, there's a music and you either hear it or you don't. And you come to realize, or I came to realize fairly quickly, that I do hear it. And, um, and I got very comfortable with that. <laughs> um, and it was very, very fast. I mean, I did, I, did, uh, I did those six episodes of Breaking Away, and then, as I say, didn't have a job. I sort of said no to everybody. And suddenly there was this offer to do a show called Remington Steel, a new show. And I said, well, what is it? And they said, well, it's a detective show. And I said, oh, I hate those things. Um, there were quite a lot of them on television at that time. And they sent over the cassette, and I watched it. And I, I was intrigued because Bob Butler directed the pilot. And Bob Butler was someone that I had always admired. He did, I believe, a lot of the seminal television show, the pilots for the seminal television shows. He did the pilot for Hogan's Heroes. He did the pilot for Batman. I used to kid him that he, he invented op art. You know, when he said, can't we see the pal? Um, he did the pilot for Hill Street Blues. He ultimately did the pilot for Moonlighting. He, to me, is the Michael Curtiz of television. He's just this amazingly great director who's also invisible in the sense that there isn't any one particular genre that's his, he can do them all. Um, and I thought, oh, this will be an opportunity to work with him. And I was very taken with um, Stephanie Zimblis, who I was not familiar with at all, and Pierce Brosnan, who I was not familiar with at all. And I thought, this is not what I want to do. I, this is not what I'm interested in, but I need a job. I had a little baby at home. And so I said, all right, I'll go do this thing, this Remington Steel thing. 